Joining me today for our Money Monday feature is Martin Montague, who spends some of his free time doing a hobby that you might laugh at. Metal detecting used to have a bad reputation, but with it now appearing on primetime TV show The Detectorist, it's making a huge comeback. And you can make money from it too. So, Martin, tell me how you first got involved with metal detecting. Sure. I was 16 and my brother bought me a metal detector for my 16th birthday. So, okay, so you were you started off quite young. Yeah, I'm still young now, but a yes, few years but ago. Yeah, but younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it that you like about it? Um, it's just the excitement. You never really know what you're going to find. And I love history, really, really into history, big time. So, okay, and, and here we've got a metal detector. Um, I've been told I can't turn it on because if I turn it on, it makes a whole lot of noise because everything here is made out of metal, so we won't do that. But essentially, it is your, they look really similar to the ones you see kind of in the films. I thought maybe there'd be some kind of different thing now. And you just wander around fields, do you? How do you know where to go? Um, basically, you can do some research. Um, you can find out if there was old Roman sites there or other kind of historical sites. You can walk them first to see if there's any um, bits of pottery and stuff. But ultimately, a lot of it's just trial and error. You get to go out and uh, detect and find out where things are. And you found a few things. We've got some on the table. What have we got? What, what is this little chappy here? OK, that's a Roman griffin. So he would have been um, kind of a votive offering. That was to a, a god at a temple site or something like that. Found that about 15 years ago in a field. So he's right. been with me a long time. Um, the other items there, there's a crotal bell, which is in the 1600s. They'd have put that's around... this one, is it? That's right. This little bell here. Still works. Okay. Oh, yeah. So they'd have put those around the sheep's necks um, okay. so that they knew where their flock was. Okay. There's a couple of Roman brooches there. Some brooches, yep. Got down here, these two. That's right. Kind of amazing that I almost feel like it would almost still work, you know, that I could put it on. I'm not going to try because it might Probably break it. Probably would, those ones, that. actually. But it kind of it looks like it would still work. And then you've got something a bit more recent here at the front as well. That's right. You find a lot of um, World War I and World War II items that are quite historical. That's from the King's Own Division. That's amazing. Um, but again, where there was a lot of troops that went off to fight the Napoleonic Wars and then First World War and Second World War, we've got a massive amount of history locally. Um, I mean, it's incredible. And what do you do with your finds? Do you just... I display them in cabinets, but a lot of people do sell them. OK. Uh, someone from Southampton recently un unearthed a hoard of a million and a half pounds worth of silver coins. And do you just get to keep that if you find it? Um, you get to keep half. So what happens is they're reported uh, to a finds liaison officer, and if the museum wants to buy them, if they're considered treasure, you get half of the reward, and the landowner gets the other half. So he got 750000 for his day out, which wasn't too bad. But he must have been searching for a lot of time. I mean, it's not everyone every day that finds that amount, is it? I don't know. There was another chap uh, in the Midlands who'd had a metal detector for 20 minutes and uh, found several hundred thousand pounds <laughs> worth of coins. It's like the lottery. You just don't uh, know when yeah, you're Yeah, I, I can imagine I'd be the sort of unlucky person that would be searching the fields around here for days and come up with nothing better than some Coke cans and a <laughs> Possibly. Some bottle lids for my efforts. <laughs> um, I won't lie, you get a lot of days like that, but you do get some very interesting days as well. And how did you find out what these things were? Is that just you know that? Or have you been kind of to museums and asked experts? Yeah, it's a, a bit of both. I mean, um, you, you use the internet, you can find out what stuff is, or speak to your finds liaison officer, which is someone who you can sort of reach out to who's an expert in the area. But again, a lot of stuff just comes with experience as you do it. OK, so if someone wanted to get started, we've piqued their interest. How, yeah. might, how much might one of these kind of metal detectors that we've got here cost? Give us a um, This part. one's about £200. Um, they start at about 100 and go up to about 2000 Blimey, 2000 Yeah. What, what does that one do? Does it make you tea as well while you're uh, working? <laughs> wish. Uh, basically, <laughs> it's just to do with the depth and the discrimination. It'll stop you digging so much iron out of the ground. Ugh. Well, I mean, it sounds it sounds fascinating. I'm not sure you've converted me, but right. I'm sure there are other people out there who would absolutely love this. And you have found some pretty amazing stuff. So congratulations on that. Martha, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming Pleasure. In. No problem.